All right. We thank, we thank you. We thank you. We thank Nat Turner. We thank Allah God. We thank the ancestors. We thank you. I thank my father personally. I yes. My beautiful wife. This is our second anniversary. Yes. Today. Oh, man. Oh, man. Black love is real. Black love matters. Black marriage is matters. And we thank Dr. Ima Ifontunde. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, look. We are kicking off today officially the fundraiser for the new Nat Turner Library building. It's going to be mm -hmm. debt free. We're not going to have no mortgage. That's right. Free the land. Mm -hmm. All the taxes are paid up on here. All right. The enemy will not be taking this from us. All right. All right. All right. There will be no debt. Debt free. Oh, With that, we're going to go ahead and unfurl this banner over here and post it up. Yes. Thank yes. You would you like to say any? Damn. Pardon me. Damn. Would you like to say any words? Uh, you got to say something, Baba. It's historic. You got to say something. All right, welcome to the Net Turner Land. Yeah. And we, we got to support the initiative, brothers and sisters. As y'all know, our people are not necessarily fine of independence. Uh, we love dependence. Uh, that's why this past presidential election was so important, not because of any democratic right to vote, but we're looking for handouts. On the other side, we're looking for opportunities from the white power structure. We have to get out of that mindset. Okay, that's that slavery mindset. That's the mindset that Nat Turner literally and metaphorically attempted to exterminate, you understand, 189 years ago and went to his death today, 189 years ago, to not just kill oppression against the African, but kill the oppressor that lives within the African. And we have to understand that until we kill the oppressor that lives within the African, we'll never be able to do anything about the oppressor that lives outside of the African. Our greater war is an internal one. That's why when we talk about reparations, there is no greater reparations than the one you give to yourself. What about what we owe to our ancestors? We keep talking about what the white man owes us, but what about what do we owe to our ancestors? The way we act, the way we spend our money, our lack of organization, our lack of discipline, our profound self-hatred, brothers and sisters. So we have to get back to independence. We have to get back to nation building. Remember, we are controlled because of our dependency on the white power structure. It is your need for his banks, his schools, his hospitals, his supermarkets, his distribution networks that keep you in chain. Freedom is only as guaranteed to the point that you have created self-sufficient, independent institutions to procure that freedom. It's nonsense to talk about separation when you don't have any separate institutions. How can you be separate when you don't have a separate institution? Black folks say if you want to separate. Separate to what? You have to create it first, brothers and sisters. And let us be clear, for the young people here, we don't advocate hate. We don't teach hate. You understand? If I need to help somebody of another race, I'll do it as long as I don't take away from my own. Because loyalty begins with ourselves. And we have to stop feeling so uncomfortable about being African family first and African race first. Everybody is for themselves first. Divinity starts with you. Your faith in the Most High is based on the fact that you are faithful to one another. There's no such thing as being faithful to God, but you ain't faithful to black people. There's no such thing as having confidence in God if you don't have confidence in yourself. As above, so below. That's one of the universal laws of Tahuti coming from our great Nalvali ancestors. As above, so below. We can't talk about justice from the white man if we don't practice justice with one another. So let us be very, very mindful, very, very conscious that our everyday lives is a projection of what we want to see in the future. And if we're going to practice oppression against each other, then we will always have it thrust upon us by the white man. We come here not just to honor Nat Turner, not just to honor Henry and Hark and Nelson and Sam and Will and Jack and Cherry and the countless dozens of other Africans who paid the ultimate front price for the liberation of black folks right here in Southampton County, Virginia, brothers and sisters. We don't come just to honor them, but we come to emulate them. We come to pick up the banner of African independence and fight for it. And independence is not just something we gain, it is something we live. You must have an independent mindset. Christmas shopping is coming up. Okay, Christmas is coming up. So most of us are about to hemorrhage in our independent communities where we live. We're about to hemorrhage millions of dollars on stuff we do not need. 
And then right after we waste it all, we're going to wait for Joe Biden to get inaugurated to see what handouts he's going to give black folks. Look how retarded and dysfunctional that is. I'm going to spend all my money with white people in December. And then at January's inauguration, I'm going to wait for Joe Biden to roll me some crumbs off his table. And then Negroes are going to fight each other for the crumbs that they get off that table. I believe in reparations. Marcus Garvey is the father of modern day reparations. But guess what? We can't talk about reparations and we ain't talking about political organization. We can talk about reparations and we're not talking about building independent black institutions. We can talk about reparations and we're not healing the black family and we're not healing the self-hate that exists within us as a people. I'm going to say this and I'm going to be quiet because I know we got to get the tour in. And we hope that almighty God and the ancestors and Orisha Oya who governs the storms, okay, literally and metaphorically, we hope that they'll hold off the rain so we can continue our celebration. Not that we have a problem with the rain, because in African culture, rain symbolizes what? The planting of a new beginning, the planting of a new reality. Rain is the great fertilizer of the crop. So rain is never a cause for us to be upset or disappointed that we got rained on. Rain is a blessing from the most high. If you don't believe me, go ask any farmer, anybody who plants their own crops, they welcome the rain and we should welcome it as well. But I want to say this, and then I want to be quiet, brothers and sisters. This decade will define us as a people, both within the continental United States and around the world. If we do not get our act together, and the first year is already wasted. The first year has been wasted waiting for Donald Trump to get out of office. I'm not sure why black folks are waiting for one white man to replace another, but that's part of that post-traumatic slavery disease that we still got. We got nine more years, brothers and sisters. These next nine are pivotal. Marcus Garvey said every day of your life, you should do something towards the ultimate liberation of African people. That's mean 365 acts of progress for the African world. We got to get serious because we ain't been there. Too many of us in the conscious community think consciousness is YouTube videos. Too many of us in the conscious community think consciousness is the festivals. We think consciousness is in the head wrap. Consciousness isn't going to Africa. No, it's not. Consciousness is in the transformation of our reality. Okay, people always ask me, Dr. Umar, when I speak to the children in the schools, they say, why did our ancestors in Nile Valley Kemet build the greatest civilization the world has ever seen in the middle of nowhere? Why did they go through the hell of putting it in a desert? No water, nothing growing. Why is the Giza complex in the middle of nowhere? Why is Ambu Bell in the middle of nowhere? Why is Luxor in the middle of nowhere? You know why? Because our ancestors had the obligation to prove to us that we can create heaven anywhere on earth. We can create heaven anywhere on earth, including right here in the United States. Yes, we do not have to all go to Africa. Yes, there is a future for us outside of Africa, but there is no future without Africa. And as we know, he lives up to that. He grew up as a child with the understanding that he was expected to become somebody great. We got it. Childhood. Why are you staying in the car?
that was dread because when a large plantation owner died, the chances of families staying together was very remote. If they had to sell the family, if they had to sell off the property, don't excuse me for calling them property, but we were chattel slaves. We were property. They owned us like he owned refrigerators and cars and other things. They had deeds of trust on our ancestors. Yet they want us to forgive. When they asked me, do I forgive? I said, no. <laughs> Don't ask me. You got to take that up with the Creator. community organizing because of Barack Obama. So we're one of the So I'm serving today I'm the to the I'm live too. What's good y'all? Black Power, King Kong Consciousness, Nat Turner, 11-11, 189th anniversary of the execution of the greatest black revolutionary to ever walk on America's soil. One love. Yeah, we got a bill. Hey, are you good? Who ordered a Philly cheese steak? Hey, I. Nat Turner, 11 11. What's good, Johnny? You got some extra on there, man. I got Lenny on there earlier. A little slam, I said, what up? It looks serious, though. It's no comparable. Somebody said, Pittsburgh, pull up. You got a cheesesteak too? Chicken. Okay. Yeah, I'm, 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 um, I'm, in, I'm, at, I'm in Virginia. I'm at Nat Turner. I need some sugar for my tea. This is day Nat Turner. We got home today. 11 11. So I'm, I'm out here, you know, two down there, right oh, down there. Yeah. I got some. Thank you. Nat Turner Lane, Nat Turner Lane. Y'all be 